This video will introduce you to SmartMove and will cover all of the essential elements required to use this system, including login, availability, job offers, job details, no-show and resubmits, messages, panic button, cash and credit card payments. SmartMove uses the latest technology to track vehicles and allocate work. Your car is fitted with a GPS, a global positioning system antenna, which picks up signals from GPS satellites which are used to calculate your car's position. The SmartMove unit sends your position to the dispatching computer at least once every minute so the system knows where every car is. The base operator can see the position of all vehicles plotted on a Google map and vehicles are tracked whether they are on a job or not. This position information is recorded in a database. SmartMove utilizes the mobile phone network for communication. We support all providers and operate on both the 3G and 4G networks. SmartMove will work wherever there is mobile phone coverage. Your SmartMove unit also reports whenever you turn your meter on and off. Work will be offered to you only when your meter is off. You must log in to use SmartMove as this tells the system who is driving the car. You cannot use SmartMove until you have logged in. Once you are logged in, everything that happens with the car is linked to you. So don't let anyone else log in as you and make sure you log out when you've finished your shift. To log into the system, enter your own driver number using the number keypad on the screen. Again, remember that your driver number is unique and should not be shared. If the numbers aren't appearing on the screen, make sure the flashing cursor is in the driver number box. Touch in the box if it isn't. Press the back button to delete a number if you make a mistake. After you have entered in your driver number, press ENT. Next, you must enter a secret PIN number. If you forget your PIN, it can only be reset by the base operator. Note that not all fleets allow PIN numbers, so check with your base. After keying in your PIN, press ENT and it will take a few seconds to log in. You may be required to complete the start of shift checklist. Once completed, you will enter your odometer reading and your meter total. If you are changing cars but are still on the same shift, press the box next to continue previous shift. Note that some jobs require odometer readings at the start and end of the job. When you are finished with the start of shift record, press accept. When you log in, your status is unavailable. You need to change this to available to be offered work. You can control your availability by pressing the coffee cup icon on the top menu. An empty cup means that you are available for work. And a cup with coffee and steam indicates that you are not available. Example, you are on a coffee break. Press the coffee cup icon to make yourself available and the status message will show your queue position. When you make yourself unavailable during a shift, to take a break for example, you may be asked how long you expect to be busy. Choose the best estimated time. Note that if you restore your availability within a short time and within the same zone, you will keep your queue position. That time is normally around 10 minutes, but may vary from fleet to fleet. Job Offers if you are available to work and there is a booking that is suitable for you, SmartMove will offer the job to you. When an offer is made, the unit will bleep and you must touch the thumbs up button to accept the offer. The offer shows the pickup area, the zone, the time requested, the job attributes, and it will show if a penalty applies for not accepting the job. You get a limited time to accept the offer. The computer will count down to zero. At that point, the offer is withdrawn and the job may be offered to another car. After you have accepted the offer, the details of the job are displayed. This will be covered in more detail later in the video. You can also reject the offer by hitting the thumbs down button. If you don't accept an offer, you may get a penalty. You will not be offered a job whilst you have a penalty. Often this isn't a problem as you may have refused the offer because you have a walk-up job. By the time you have finished that job, the penalty may have expired. If you get a penalty, you also lose your queue position and go to the back of the queue. In the simplest case, a booking will be offered to the car that has been vacant longest in the pickup zone. This car will have queue position 1. It doesn't matter what page you have on your screen when an offer is being made. The job will always be displayed so you don't miss out. 
If you are entering fair payment details when a job offer comes through, you can accept the job, but you won't get the job details until you have finalised the previous job. If you are available for work but want to leave your car, you should use the out of car feature. The rules used to decide which car is offered a job are complicated and are covered in more detail in a separate video tutorial. Job details. After you accept a booking, you will be sent the details for that booking. There is a lot of information on this screen and we will work through the various sections. Every job is given a unique number and this appears at the top left of the screen. Record this number if you have any queries about the job. For jobs booked in advance, the time shown on the screen is the requested time. For other bookings, this field shows the time the booking was entered into the system. The details for the first pickup address are shown. The details include the passenger's name. The address. Please note this could be a street address or a place name. The suburb or area. The number of passengers if specified in the booking. And the passenger's phone numbers. Again, if specified in the booking. Note that this does not always show in some fleets. In some cases, there may be more than one pickup or drop-off address. Use the left and right finger buttons to show the various addresses. If the base operator has provided extra information in the booking, the I button will flash and the unit will make a quacking sound until you touch the I button. Press the I button again to return to the booking details. The screen also shows the attributes specified for the booking. This lets you see if there are any special requirements such as a baby capsule. If a price has been quoted to the customer, it may also be shown on the screen. If the customer has been given a firm quote, it will show on the screen as a fixed price job. For fixed price jobs, you don't normally use the meter. Instead, you tell Smartmove you have started the job by using the Start Job button. Once you have started the job, the button will change to the End Job button and you can press it when you have finished the job. If your car has a working GPS unit, the distance to pick up is shown along with an arrow that shows you the direction. The distance is particularly useful when you are trying to find the right house on a street. Keep driving until it shows zero. Note that the distance is a straight line distance and you may have to drive further. The arrow is only a general guide and is not intended to show you the route you need to take. Use the navigation button to get a map and instructions on how to find the address. There may be cases when you can't do the job. For example, this can happen if you have a walk up after accepting a job. In this case, you use the resubmit button to put the job back in the system so that another driver can do the job. This will be covered in the next section. If you get to the pickup address and can't find the passengers, you can use the no show button. Make sure you understand the difference between the resubmit button and the no show button. If you resubmit a job, it is given to someone else. If you use the no-show button, the job is not given to anyone else. The no-show button is normally used when you can't find the passenger. However, it may also apply if the passenger is unsuitable or if there is some other reason why the job should not be done. When you press the no-show button, the no-show screen will be displayed. If you arrive at the pickup address before the book time, then the time you need to wait is displayed on the page in red text as time till pickup. Depending on your fleet's policy, you may not be able to use the buttons until the time required has elapsed. The buttons are grey until you can use them. Some fleets also require the drivers wait at the pickup point for a set period to give the passenger time to appear. If this applies to your fleet, then the time you need to wait is displayed on the page in red text as time at address. You will not be able to use the buttons until the time required has elapsed. When booking time and the wait time, if there is any, have elapsed, the time at address text turns black and the buttons can be selected. Select the reason that best describes why you are cancelling the job. The reason is recorded with the booking details in case there is a complaint. If you use the no-show button and you are not near the pickup location, then you may get a penalty. The fleet manager can get a report listing bookings for which the driver did a no-show when nowhere near the pickup location. Remember that in all cases the aim is to provide the best service to customers. Don't use the no-show button before making a reasonable effort to find the passengers. 
If you are at the pickup location when you use the no-show button, then you won't get a penalty. If the pickup is in the same zone you were in when you got the job, then you will normally get your old queue position back. If you have moved to a different zone, you will get a queue position in that zone based on when you went vacant before this booking. You won't necessarily get queue position 1 if someone else in the zone has been vacant longer. That person will be ahead of you in the queue. When you use the no-show button, you immediately become eligible for another job provided you didn't get a penalty. The resubmit button is used when you can't do a job you have accepted. There are several situations when this occurs. When you press the resubmit button, you are given a list of reasons. Your list may be slightly different from those shown here. If you are doing another job, simply choose the doing another job, walk up slash hail option. If you don't have the right type of vehicle, choose the change job and resubmit option. You will then have the opportunity to change some of the job details. If there are too many people for your vehicle, then set the correct number. If the job attributes haven't been set correctly, then make the changes required. For example, if a wheelchair vehicle is required, then put a tick next to WAT, Wheelchair Accessible Taxi. If you touch in an empty box, you will get a tick. A tick means that the vehicle or driver must have that attribute. If you touch on a box with a tick, you will get a cross. This means that the vehicle or driver must not have that attribute. If you touch on a box with a cross, you will get a blank box. This means that the attribute doesn't apply. It doesn't matter if the vehicle or driver has the attribute or not. In the example shown here, the booking is for a vehicle which has a capsule but is not a maxi. If the passengers aren't ready to be picked up and want the taxi later, you can put a delay on the job. Touch the resubmit button when you have finished making changes. Use the cancel button if you don't want to change anything. If you aren't prepared to pick up the passenger, you should choose the won't go to that address option. The aim of the resubmit button is to make sure a job gets done even if you can't or won't do it straight away. This avoids the passenger calling again and making a complaint that the job wasn't done or that you were very late picking up. If there is no one else available to take the job after you have resubmitted it, then it may be offered to you again. This may happen a few times depending on the option chosen for your fleet. SmartMove allows the base operator to send you text messages through the unit in your car. You can also make voice calls to the base operator. When the base operator has sent you a text message, the message button will flash and the unit will chirp. To read a message, press the flashing envelope button. Sometimes the base operator may want to reply. In this case, buttons appear on the unit and the unit will continue to bleep until a reply has been sent. Press the appropriate reply. This sends the response to the base. Note that the chirping will continue if there is a message which you have not responded to. You can use the hand arrows to look through past or unread messages. Note that the base operator knows if you have read a message or not. It is possible to use the unit to make a voice call to the base operator. To do this, press on the headset button. There are options to set the type of call. Urgent, if you want the base operator to respond immediately. Job, if you need to make a new booking. Query, about the current job. Or other, for all other types of calls. When you touch one of the buttons, the base operator is notified that you want a call. The base operator will make the call as soon as convenient. To end the call or cancel the call, press cancel. If the operator hangs up, the call will end automatically. The volume can be adjusted by sliding the voice volume bar. The mic volume bar sets the sensitivity of the microphone. For example, high sensitivity means that the microphone is very sensitive and will pick up a lot of car and road noise. If the operator has difficulty hearing you, try turning the microphone's sensitivity down. The panic button or duress button is used to discreetly alert the base operator that you urgently need help. Normally you do this when a passenger in the car is behaving aggressively and you are worried about your safety. The button is located on your dashboard. If you hold the button in for about two seconds, a signal is sent to the base. When it arrives, a loud noise is played to alert the operator. The alarm icon appears on your screen to tell you that the signal has been sent. The base operator can listen to what is happening in the car. 
When this is done, the speaker in your unit is muted so that you won't get any bass noise in the car. This is done as the passenger might get upset if aware that the bass operator is listening. Don't use the panic button unless you really do need help. You don't want to disrupt operations and create an emergency situation without a good reason. Try to have a conversation with the passenger so that the base operator can get a feeling for what is going on in the car. Discuss anything that might be useful to people trying to help you. From time to time, you should check that the panic button works. Do this with the extended menu icon and then the panic button icon. If you press the panic button briefly, the top icon on the panic test page will light up. If you hold down the panic button for a couple of seconds, the bottom icons will light up. A message is sent to the base indicating that you are testing the button. You can reset the panic testing using the reset alarm button on the screen. Remember, don't use it unless you really are concerned about your safety, but don't hesitate to use it if you are worried. Most jobs are paid with cash or credit card, and Smartmove makes these transactions easy to record. When you complete a job, the fare payment screen will appear. On the right-hand side, you can see the fare owing. The fare normally comes from the meter. For non-metered jobs, the price might have been set by the base operator. Otherwise, you will need to set the fare using the fare button. We will come back to that shortly. When the fare is displayed, you need to say how the fare was paid by pressing the paid by button. At the bottom right, you have the amount owing and you must get that value down to zero. If the entire amount was paid in cash, press the 100% cash button. The amount will then show a zero. You can now press the done button. There is nothing more to do. If the entire amount was paid by credit card, press the 100% card button. Once again, the amount owing will show a zero and you can now press the done button. In some cases, you may need to enter or change the amount owing. This is done by using the fare button. Not all jobs are paid entirely with cash or credit card. In some cases, a subsidy may apply. In other cases, some or all of the fare is on account. You won't miss out on work while you are entering the payment details. You may still be offered a job. You can accept the job, but you won't get the job details until you finish recording the payment details for the job you have just finished. This is to make sure that you get all the paperwork done. This video has covered all of the essential requirements needed to begin using the SmartMove system. Once you are comfortable with these procedures, please watch the follow-up videos which cover more advanced procedures within SmartMove. Thank you for watching.